Welcome viewers to another Copenhagen Middle Earth Battle Gamers video. I'm your host Rob and today I'm going to be showing you a few of the miniatures that I've been working on over the last week. So let's have a look. So here are the first models that I've painted. Uh, these are the uh, a couple of Galadrian warriors. Uh, I have finished all 12 now thankfully. It took me a very long time to get them all done I have to say. Uh, mostly due uh, to the amount of gold work that I had to do on these models because most of the model is gold um, and I really wanted that gold to be nice and shiny and so obviously that requires quite a few layers um, so what I basically did, they all had a um, uh, an, an undercoat uh, of Doom Bull Brown uh, to start with all over the model and then the first thing I did was to work on the gold so what I used then was uh, Auric Armor Gold uh, when that dried, I gave it a wash with Agrax Earthshade. And when that was dried, I uh, I dry brushed it again with uh, Auric Armor Gold. And at the very end to finish it off, uh, just on the highest edges, I gave them a mixture, 50-50 of Auric Armor Gold and... What was it? Lead Belcher. So you kind of get a sort of platinum colour. And I thought that just really made the... Uh, the gold pop uh, made it, you know, extra extra shiny, and I think it gives a pretty good effect. Um, in regards to the capes, uh, that was a base coat of uh, Macarage blue. And then that had a wash of Drakenhof nightshade, and then it was uh, highlighted again with Macarage blue, and then a final highlight of uh, Calador sky. So that was the cape. I'm pretty happy with those as well. I really like the uh, the strong colours that it gives. A uh, nice contrast as well to like the to the red uh, clothing. And that was done using uh, a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet, and then again a wash with Agrax Earthshade. Uh, highlighted again with the uh, first colour Evil Sun Scarlet, and then an extreme highlight with Wild Rider Red. Uh, the chap. On uh, on the right, that is of course uh, Heldir. Again, exactly the same principle as uh, the rest of his warriors, only uh, with the red cape uh, and uh, yeah, blue tunic. So I was very happy with this little guy. Came up very well. I mean, uh, I always try to paint all of my models to uh, the same standard, whether it's a a hero or a um, yeah a warrior choice. Just because I think it gives a nice bit of uh, yeah, a cohesive uh, look throughout the whole army. Uh, so I do my best. I mean, I could maybe have gone a little bit extra with Heldir, but uh, yeah. I like, I like it when they all have the same standard of paint job. So that is, um, that's my, my elves. The next thing I was working on uh, was a lovely model uh, that was given to me by... Uh, the host Christian of the channel. If you know, you might have seen him on some uh, some earlier videos. Uh, and this is, of course, um, the Faramir model, uh, the mounted Faramir model with uh, with shield. Uh, very very nice model, um, and it, it's really quite perfect because my Minas Tirith force is uh, is painted in a in a blue and yellow scheme. Uh, so. It was quite easy to uh, to visualise what it looked like because GW decided to paint their model of this in uh, in the blues as well, so I could I could already tell that he was really going to suit uh, my army uh, with the paint scheme, uh, and he's absolutely perfect. Um, I haven't used him yet in a in a in a video because uh, I have the uh, the other model of him uh, where he doesn't have all this. Uh, uh, yeah, a blue cape and blue tabard, etc. Uh, but I do look forward to using him in the future. So next time I use Minas Tirith, I'll probably have to put him in my army list, for sure. Next up, we have the Mouth of Sauron. Uh, now the captain for my evil army, which is of course my, uh, my main force. Uh, so it's always nice to get additions uh, for that army. Uh, very simple paint scheme. Nothing immensely special. Um, 
But I really like the way he came out. Uh, I have to say, he is one of my favourite characters from the book, and I really liked uh, the way that uh, they made him in the film. I thought that the character and uh, his very nasty mouth was absolutely uh, was perfect. And yeah, really, you can really tell that he is the mouth of Sauron. There's no denying that. Uh, you can't see it very well on this camera. Um, but I was very happy with the way that the teeth came out. Uh, they're very clear when you see it in person. You may be able to see it a little bit there, but yeah, cause, um, I was a bit worried about that. I was hope uh, a bit worried that the sculpt was maybe not perfect uh, within that tiny area, but um, at least uh, with the model that I bought, uh, I got quite lucky with it. So I was very happy with that. And seeing as it's the uh, the main focus of him, I was very pleased. And the final models to show you, I have finally, after trying to collect them for a long time, I finally have uh, a mini army that I've been wanting ever since I started collecting the game, and that is the White Council. So here we have Elrond, uh, I think this is the, um, the Master of Rivendell model. Uh, I do have uh, the old armoured version as well, the one that you get with uh, with Gilgalad in the blister. Um, but I th thought that I'll save that one for more for when I uh, for when I use uh, a Rivendell force, uh, just because I think when he's uh, in his robes like this, he just kind of fits in more with the, uh, with, the with the council. And next we have uh, a model that probably everybody owns, and that is uh, little Gandalf there. Um, got this uh, uh, when the uh, the old metal fellowship uh, box set came out. I've had him for a while. Never actually painted him, surprisingly. Uh, I've only painted him recently. Uh, I do have another one, though. So I have two exactly the same, painting exactly the same style. Um, but the other one is the resin model. Because uh, I knew I had this model back in England, um, so when I want, was going to go home and bring him over, I was going to paint him uh, as Gandalf the White. Uh, so he kind of had the look of he does in the uh, in what what is it the nineteen seventies cartoon, where he still has his hat and everything, but he's completely white. That was what I was originally going to do, but seeing as uh, the resin is uh, a little prone to breaking, and sadly. The first time I did use my uh, resin Gandalf, the sword broke uh, on its journey to the to the game's workshop store. So, so that kind of scared me a little bit from using them. So, my uh, my resin uh, fellowship is mostly just for display now. So uh, I'll need to finish off getting all the metal ones. Sadly, I lost most of them uh, through through time, basically. But uh, found this guy, so he's perfect uh, for my white council. So next week here we have Radagast the Brown, and I got the older model uh, purely because I like it more, and uh, I try to get metal wherever I can. So it was a a double bonus basically having him in metal and it being my fav uh, favorite Radagast pose. Uh, so I was very happy with that. A really cool model. I really like his staff and uh, and the way he looks. Uh, I believe uh, had this discussion with Morton once. And uh, he says that he just thinks he looks like uh, a standard druid from Warhammer, and I uh, I do see what he says. I could definitely see it as um, as what they called like a wizard from the the school of Brown or whatever it is the yeah Earth spell discipline. I'm not 100 percent what sure what it's called, but uh, yeah, if I ever did fantasy, that would uh, totally be a a perfect model to use for that. Uh, but I like him. Next up we have uh, Galadriel, very uh, difficult model to paint this one. I really, really hate painting white, like I'm sure most of you do. Um, but what I basically did, I gave her a black undercoat, yes, not a white one, but a black one. Uh, and then I just mixed up, I don't know the ratio, but uh, white and black paint together to get a sort of a, a medium grey. Uh, covered her in that. Uh, and then used uh, the whitest white that I had, uh, and then just uh, in the recesses, 
I just dropped some of that Drakenhof Nightshade in there into the creases and then just neatened it up again with the white and I'm, I have to say I'm very happy with the way it came out. I was very nervous about painting her, she's one of my favourite characters in the whole franchise. Um, so I'm quite happy with it, I feel like I've given her justice, at least to my painting ability. So I was very, very chuffed with her when I finally got it done. And lastly, my last model that I have uh, for my White Council is uh, Kelleborn, her husband. Again, cool model. Uh, I don't have the armoured uh, version, but like uh, once again, I like the way they look in their in their finery for the White Council. Uh, so that's the model that I wanted to use for that. And of course, with uh, with both of those, you get uh, the mirror like that. So that was a very cool little model to paint, something a bit different. So yeah, so that is my White Council. Uh, I do have Saruman, uh, but. Um, He's been used for my uh, for my little Isengard force, so maybe I'll uh, think about getting another one, just so I can have a cohesive uh, base with uh, with all of them. As you can see, I need to paint the rims of uh, of uh, of the three, so they have that darker brown, so they all tie in. Uh, but uh, my evil forces always have like a kind of swampy green base. Uh, I think that suits them very well. So I usually have like this um, this brown uh, grass patched look for my good forces, then I have a swampy uh, green for uh, my evil forces. So I'll have to get another Saruman, I think, to add him to the White Council. But there you are. So that is what I've been working on. Uh, I hope you like this video. Uh, maybe you'll see some of these models in a battle report at some point. Um, and I'll see you soon with my next video.